short. Yeah, text all the Thank you for all the things that you had to say about our Central American policy. I appreciate it very much. <laughs> but George was there. It's it's fair. Fair. I really unloaded, but I felt so strongly about the issue. I didn't need any notes on that one. Well, God bless you. I appreciate it. But now, do you have any concerns about the MX? <laughs> Senators, that 
Can tell the senators that? Did tell them that? No, we've, uh, no, I have a letter that uh, hasn't gone up yet to the Senate. The letter has gone to the House. Uh, I'll answer some of their, their questions of these things. But yes, that's something we very definitely will look at. Lights, please. Thank you.
Mr. President, the technical problems on the build-down proposal, are they such that you think you'll be able to overcome them and incorporate that into the U.S. negotiating position? Well, uh, um, I don't take questions on photo opportunities. Uh, as you can see, I'm smiling. I'm optimistic. Nice, please. I you said to Sam, I brought your camera. camera. I said, this is a photo opportunity. <laughs> and as I started to walk away, the gal down there just said, but they're voting today. And that was when I just over my shoulder said, well, it's a non-binding resolution. <laughs> okay. You're all dressed for the evening. Oh, we're ready. We're all ready. Oh, we're ready. Very good to see you. Well, good to see you. Yes, sir. I hope we can do as well. Why don't you just turn towards me? I hope we can do as well in this one. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi. Oh, I didn't know you stood that way. John, turn around. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. $250,000 of which will be presented to Jim Brady this evening, so I thought maybe you might want to say something to him. Well, yes. First of all, thanks. <laughs> uh, these last couple of days, I just said a little earlier in here, I'm, I'm about ready to give snarling lessons. <laughs> I've been meeting with uh, this guy and uh, Dick Lugar, no, uh, with some of their cohorts and colleagues up there in the Hill on a few matters having to do with the budget and with MX and some things of that kind. And believe me, 
what we need is uh, more of our kind of people up there. And uh, I don't know what we would have done, seriously, without that majority in the Senate and the one house. And when you stop to think back that uh, uh, we haven't had that for 26 or 7 years, it's been both houses the other way, but even so with the, with the wrong house. I, I had eight years, seven of which I had a Democratic legislature, and uh, now here we are, and uh, <laughs> while I've been fortunate to have the Senate with a majority for two years, I keep wondering what it must be like for a fellow to be in this job and have a majority legislature of his own party. <laughs> but uh, I know what you've done and, uh, to bring this about and why you're here. And uh, I can't tell you how much I think that is a service to the country. I'm grateful to all of you. I've told many times, and maybe some of you, uh, I admire people that can do what you have done in raising funds because that's never been easy for me. That's why I got in government, where you don't have to ask what you just take. <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, and maybe I shouldn't do this, tell an old story, but it was an old one that I used to tell lots of times speaking to illustrate my uh, feelings about the inability of the difficulty of raising money. It was the new char charity chairman in uh, his town. And he looked at the records and he saw that a well-to-do gentleman in his town uh, had never contributed to the local charity. So he went to see him and he said, our records show that you've, your income is well in excess of six figures. And he said, and you've never contributed a cent to charity. And the man said, yes, do your records also show that my brother was invalided in the war and has never been able to work a day since? Do they show that my mother was left widowed with children and no income or insurance? And he went on this way and the fellow finally said, well, no, I'm sorry, they know the records don't show that. Well, he said, I don't give anything to them. Why should I give something? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I know we're, I guess we all better be getting over to the other building there. Thank you. Gates and Mrs. Reagan. Well, thank you very much. Nancy and I are both very happy to see you here, and there are a lot of familiar faces from years past as well as last year. In the past, the special support that given by all of you to the House Senate dinner has meant a great deal and is going to be a lot more in the next year and a half. Believe me, next year's election will be a crucial one for the country. Now, I know there's been some speculation about my own plans, and I do wish the Democrats would quit reminding me about how stable Social Security is these days. <laughs> and how low the airfares are to California. <laughs> In fact, some of them are urging me to retire and become an elder statesman. That's what they were accusing me of when I ran for the job. <laughs> you know, this time of year when we're talking budget, a lot of senators visit the Oval Office, including some Democratic senators, of course, for a little arm twisting. I can always tell when one of those Democrats is planning on running for president. He brings his decorators. <laughs> uh, but we are getting the country out of the economic mess we were in. Inflation is down, as you know. Interest rates are down. Productivity is up. Real wages are up. So is the stock market, auto sales, housing starts, and the list goes on and on. You know, the Democrats claim that we caused the recession, but the other day one of them said we can't take credit for the early recovery. It's just one of those cyclical things. <laughs> I, I, you know, they tell a story about Malcolm Forbes, the famous publisher and balloonist. He was floating over Lake Michigan and finally reached land and came down in a wheat field. And he saw one of the local natives there and said, excuse me, sir, could you tell me where I am? And the fellow said, well, you're in a basket in a field of wheat. 
And Forbes said, you must be chairman of a transnational corporation. 